I just want to talk to you all for a few minutes. Is that okay? Welcome to midweek service. Man, it's good to be back. I didn't want to miss two midweeks in a row. Uh, two weeks ago, I was uh, kind of nursing a stomach bug that just wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't leave. I came back, and the flight back was just terrible. It was horrible. And, um, and man, uh, it, was, uh, it was a desire of mine to be here today. Sonia told me, too. She was like, you should, miss, you should be missing midweek service. And uh, Sonny and I are celebrating our ninth wedding anniversary today. And, uh, you know, we're, we're so excited. Thank you. We're so excited about what God is doing in our lives. We got a chance to celebrate yesterday. For those of y'all who are thinking that I'm a terrible husband, uh, we, we wanted to make sure that we celebrated each other. So we did that yesterday. And we even went this morning. We took a few hours off work and went this morning and got some uh, brunch as well. So we did do our celebration for those of y'all judging me. Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. But um, I was praying for y'all. I was praying for y'all this morning. And in my heart, I felt like the Holy Spirit was speaking to me and saying, hey, I need you to talk to the church about leaving open doors, leaving open doors, leaving gates unguarded. And I feel like this is a challenge to us as Christians and believers because knowing and unknowingly and unknowingly, there are so many times that we as believers leave so many gates unguarded in our lives. I talk about this so much, but, uh, you know, people always have their guards up the moment I start talking about this. Christians can't have demons entering their lives. Christians cannot deal with devils and demons. We are possessed by God. We're not possessed by the devil. That's true. That's true. There's a certain amount of truth to that. If we are possessed by God, you should not be possessed by anything else. But that again, God gives you the responsibility to guard that which God has given you. Guarding hearts is an integral part of Christian living. See, yes, you would not allow the enemy to possess the land that God has given you if you guarded. See, that's a, that was a problem with the Israelites. It wasn't that God gave them their inheritance. It was the fact that they didn't protect it. Am I talking to somebody? They allowed all the, the Hittites and the Amorites and the, the Perizzites and all the Parasites to invade and enter into their space, which was God's space, because they gave them legal permission to. Am I, am I talking to somebody? It, does, it didn't mean that they were not, it didn't take away that they were God's people. It didn't take away from the fact that they still belong to God and God called them their, his own. And they, no matter how much they flee, no matter how much they rejected God, no matter how much they left doors open. And, and don't we do that often? My little um, daughter, Carissa, not Michaela. Michaela's better now, but Michaela was like hoping that I wasn't going to call her name. Every day after she comes back from Sea Kids on Sundays, people go up to her and say, your dad talked about you. And she's like, ah, not again. So the moment I said daughter, she looked up at me. But Carissa the other day went up to the fridge because she wanted, I don't know if it was a snack or a drink, but she went in and she went into the fridge and um, she came back with her drink. Three hours later, I went in the garage for something. It was the outside fridge. So we have two fridges. For those of you who are wondering, we have a fridge inside and then we have a fridge in the garage. Um, and uh, I went into the garage and I saw the fridge wide open. Three hours later. Three hours later. And I looked at her and said, Carissa! I was like, what were you doing? She's like, what, daughter? I was like, you left the fridge open. You remember that? I was like, you left the fridge open. I didn't do it. Who did it? Mickey's like, I didn't do it. I knew that Mickey didn't do it. It had to be Rizzy. But sometimes it wasn't that she didn't want to close it, but the excitement of getting that juice back, she's like, <laughs> can often leave you leave. Like, like, see, the excitement of sin sometimes, the excitement of the possibility of what's beyond that gate or what's knocking often leaves us unguarded in our hearts. And for Christians, you have what you let in, what you allow, what you give access to. 
is what you have. Don't be thrown off by what you deal with in your life because somewhere you gave legal access to the enemy to come into those doors. See, God is the watcher of his people. God is the gate. He, he says, I am the watchman. But if you willfully, willingly open up the door and allow the enemy to come in. So what are gates? And I just want to talk about this real quick. Are you okay with that? See, when you open your door and when you open your gate, you allow stuff to come in. And all kinds of spirits have access to that point. It's, it's free reign. It's open door. Am I talking to somebody? It's open house on that day. You don't, they don't have to take an appointment with you. You have given us, there's a sign out there in your yard that says, it's an open house. Anybody can walk right in. And if you have that sign out there, and for so many of us, we have signs like that out there. But brother, I'm, I'm baptized. I'm, I'm, you know, saved. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I speak in tongues. I'm washed by the blood of Jesus. But you're still watching porn. But you're still doing the stuff that the other Christian, that, that, that the non-Christians do and the non-believers do. You're still giving a door for the enemy to work in your heart. You're still entertaining those conversations. You still go out with those people. I could keep going on and on, but you can fill in the blanks for you yourself. Like, what is your kryptonite? Like, what is that one thing that you can sacrifice and you can give up all day and allow that door to be open because it's the, this makes me feel good. And sometimes it's the most unseeming things. Close the door. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you about. Just close the door. Can I give you 10 things real quick? And then we'll continue in worship. 10 things. I want to break, I want to encourage us to break off some things, okay? Now, this is not a Bible study. This is a word of encouragement. That's what we do on Wednesdays, is we come together. You know, I preach on Sundays. So if you want to preaching from the word, come on Sundays and I'll teach you from the word, okay? This is still, this is still biblical, but I want you to listen now. There, there are things that invade our territory that God has put, that, that God has given us. The number one thing is generational curses sometimes, generational bondages that's handed down from generation to generation. If not dealt with, if not managed, if not broken, if not identified, you give a foothold to the enemy, not just to affect you, and you don't carry on that, that curse, but you, you enable it and you, you will pass it on to the people that come into your life. It could be your children, it could be your children's children. Deal with things that need to be broken off in your life. I wish I could talk about this more as a conversation in the future, but so many of us are dealing with generational stuff, generational bondages, generational, you know, uh, transgressions. Can we call it even that? Like transgressions of our fathers, iniquities, like we learned in the XO conference, like, like he called it, whatever his name, Jimmy, Jimmy Evans calls it, he calls it iniquities. Stuff that you haven't dealt with that you know that is a problem but you feel it would end with your dad. How many of y'all looked at your parents, and no matter how awesome your dad is, or no, no, no matter how awesome your mom is, you're like, I would never do that. I would never act this way. I would never say those things. I would never do that to my kids. But without your knowledge, it has the effect of getting over you. It has the effect of transferring from you to your children, to your children's children. Break that in Jesus' name. Okay, the num and I put this up there because without your knowledge, there are so many generational bondages that are walking right into your doors and you have given access to it. It's, it's under your roof. It's living right under your roof, under your watchful eye. And you are taming it. Let, let me say this. Some of us have tamed our generational curses. We have domesticated our generational curses. And for us, it's as long as we have it on a leash, as long as we have it under control, we're going to be okay with it. And I want to warn us as Christians, do not give a foothold to the enemy because if you give him an inch, he takes a, you, you know this. And I want to encourage us, please break anything off. From your parents, from your parents' parents, I need to move on. Can I go on? Second one is rejection. And for many of us, it's parental rejection. It's rejection from people of influence in our life. For me, for years, I lived under bondage because I allowed the rejection of teachers that put me down, that reject, not my parents, my teachers. I allowed a woman and what she had to say about me 
to influence what I thought about me. A woman that was selfish, a woman that had agendas in her life to speak over me and say that I was this and this and this and labels that I put over my head and labels that I put on myself because I thought that it was given to me by somebody of significance. Like who in your life has rejected you? Deal with those rejections. Deal with those rejections before those rejections can define who you are. You will live your entire life. It's a big gap. It's a big, and, and for some of us, it's continuous rejection. For some of us, we can't maintain friendships and relationships with people because we've been rejected at some point in our life. You close off opportunity for future relationships, for future friendships, for future marriages, for future, you know, uh, possible, you know, whatever it is. You close it off because somebody hurt you in the past. What rejections? For some of us, it's parental relationships. I have counseled so many people in my life who have been rejected by their parents. Unwanted pr pregnancies. You know, I counseled a guy that, that, that at the, I think it was at least, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go to him. I don't know the correct number, but at least 15 sessions that I did with him and finally uncovered the fact that the depression and the, 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 the dejection that he was going through in life rooted from the fact that from a very early, early on time in his life, he heard from his parents that he was the unwanted child. He was the unplanned pregnancy. He was the one that really was not meant to be, but he was a tolerated one. He was the one that happened. And, and sometimes parents have no filter about that. But I've heard that from parents. Oh, you know, and, 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 and the kids somehow find out about it. They hear it. Oh, we were not planning to have the third one, but it it's, nothing's a mistake by God. It isn't. What you consider a mistake is in God's divine plan. I want to remind, if you've been a victim of that, at some point in your life where somebody told you that you were not wanted, in Jesus' name, I rebuke that over your life. And I speak such freedom that I pray that God will break some bondages that you've been living under. Bondages of rejection. Can I go on? Sometimes it's growing up in broken homes. For some of us, it's the doors of being bro born and raised in a broken home. And by broken home, I don't mean divorce. You can be from a family where the dad and mom are together, but it could be fights, emotional garbage that you have seen growing up. The emotional torture that your mom or your dad have had to go through from the, their significant, their, uh, the, the other spouse. Verbal abuse, physical abuse that you've seen and, and you've seen them tolerate. And you have no idea the number of people that will go through abuse willingly because that's what they saw in their home. If mom went through that and was okay with it, maybe I'm strong enough to go, go through it. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. Do not allow that to come anywhere near your house. Four, getting involved with the occult. Oh, we're Christians. Are we really having this conversation? Yes. Okay. Call it whatever. Call it black magic. Call it white magic. Call it kundalini. Call it, I don't know what the other stuff is. All the demonic stuff. Astrology. Can we talk about the number of Christians that go to fortune tellers? See, that's why we have the Holy Spirit. That's why we have discernment, word of wisdom, word of knowledge. That this, these are gifts of the Spirit that you and I got to operate in and walk under that anointing of. Praying for the dead, horror houses. Can we have real conversations right now? Do not expose yourself. Like, f for me, growing up, I had to make a consciousness. I was going through so much torment in my life. And I had, to, I, I had to literally accept the fact it was because I was watching scary movies. I was watching horror movies and I was getting a thrill out of that. But I had no idea the effect it had on my life. Because everybody that told me, my youth pastor was uncool and not, not progressive enough when he told me, I look back and I'm like, I should have listened. But I treated that again as a domesticated issue. As long as I have it unleashed, I'm not going to. 
I'm, I'm talking to some of y'all today. I pray that you will close that door, disconnect from the kingdom of darkness. Anything that associates itself with the kingdom of darkness, disconnect from in the name of Jesus. Speak up against it. Rebuke it. Do not condone it. I cannot be more clearer than that. We are children of the light, children of God. We are a city on a hill. We are the light of the world. And anything that comes against that is a door that you're opening for the enemy to set foot into. Disconnect. Taking part in false religions. I need to continue this conversation. Anybody or anything that associates with you that says, oh, Jesus is the, one of the ways to God. Like, like we got to accept every religion. We can take a little bit of good from, no, 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 no. No, I'm sorry, but Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am. There is no negotiation when it comes to that. Guys, I, I, I cannot stress enough. Like, it's not about being open-minded. Like, it, there are no many ways to God. There is one way to God, and that is to say I'm a sinner in desperate need of Jesus and his forgiveness, and it's to come to the throne room of God and say, God, I need you in my life. YouTube preachers, not everybody that says God, God, God is somebody you need to listen to. I had somebody in my church the other day that said, Pastor, have you watched this video? And he sent it to me, and I'm like, do you know that dude is Mormon? What is that, Pastor? Oh, really? It was like a fail moment for me as a pastor. I'm like, what am I even doing? Oh, it sounds cool. I don't care if it sounds cool or not. Not everybody that says Jesus, Jesus. Come on, am I talking to somebody? And Jesus even said that. It's the word of God. Hey, I, please filter it. If you're not sure about it, message me, tell me, so I can ask you, do you know that guy is not Christian? But pastor, he says Jesus. It doesn't matter. Please use discernment. I'm, I'm, just because somebody's preaching the word. Six, abuse and trauma. Rejection that's come through going, I, I went through this. I was molested. I was sexually molested as a child by somebody that was supposed to care for me. Uh, and I've, I've talked about this. There's, there's, there's a conversation that I've had before. I took years and years to open up about this. I've had to get delivered from it. But I lived in that, in that guilt. I don't know why. But I lived in that guilt and that shame for many years because of something that happened to me when I was four years old. When I did not have any control, but it was etched in my memory. Like I was saying last Sunday, there's not many things that I remember from my childhood, but things like that can leave a scar in your life. And if not dealt with, and if you're not asking for forgiveness and you're not asking for deliverance, you're going to carry that on. Like that's, that's going to be a, a, a scar in your life that's going to live on and on and on. I am glad I broke that off. I am glad I, I did not leave that door open and I allowed the enemy to walk right out of my, my house when it came to that. Seven, illicit sexual encounters. I'm talking to young people, married people, older people, there's not enough times that I can repeat this over and over again. Having sexual encounters with anybody outside of marriage and outside of your covenant of marriage, this is just not for single people, everybody, I'm talking to you. Don't consider me as not cool. I am, I'm being very honest here. There is this thing called a soul tie. When you have sex with somebody, your souls are, are merging together. You become one. It's not I do's at an altar that makes you one. Please understand this. I'm talking to young people that are dating. I'm talking to young people that are serious about marriage. It is easy to get carried away. 
Sonia and I were having dinner yesterday and we were having some honest conversations. And we were talking about how God helped us through the times that we were dating to hold our commitment of purity to each other sacred till the time we got married. It was hard. It was difficult. It was the most. And, and, and for some of us, and I'm, I'm talking to him, I'm not, I really don't want to sound holier than that. That's not the point over here. I really, I, I want you to hear my heart out on this. And if there's somebody that's not been able to hold on to that, it's not too late. It's not too late to make a covenant with God and say, God, you know what? I'm sorry. I lived outside of my covenant of being in relationship with you. And I pray that that will never, ever happen again. If that's happened to you in marriage, confess that to confess that to husband. Come out clean. If it's happened outside of marriage and it's happened in a dating relationship, confess to the Lord and say, God, I am sorry. I have opened the door for the enemy to have a foothold in my life. Rebuke that. Do not allow it to happen again. Does that make sense? Like, I am not sitting here and saying, you're doomed. I'm just saying, ask God. You know now. Open, open your heart and say, God, I'm drawing a boundary. I'm drawing, you know, this line and saying, this is it. I'm not going to do it again. Eight, abortion. Abortion is murder. Okay. I will scream it out from the rooftops. I will say this till my dying breath. And I will not change it for nothing in this world. And don't think that I'm this conservative Bible thumping. That's not what I want you to associate this with. This is biblical. This isn't about a political party. It's not about a political belief. This is about God. This is about morality. This is about what God calls life and death and abortion. And if you've been in a situation like that, I'm praying that you will have just the courage to go to the Lord and say, God, I'm sorry. If you were a part of a decision that, that you made to abort a baby at some point in life, in your life. I pray that you will ask God, and that's a door. Uh, nine, entertainment. What are you watching? What are you listening to? Worship team, you guys can get up, come back up. And you guys don't have to go around. You can come walk right up. Save some time. What are you watching? What are you listening to? You can tell me you're saved, but you're listening to Cardi B on your radio. Like you're lifting your hands up in worship on a Sunday morning. But yo, what's on your radio? Like what's on your playlist? Like those Instagram things that people have that they post, the Spotify most listened to, I'm like, you're an embarrassment to the kingdom of God. To see what you listen to all year. At least hide it from, like, know that I'm following you and I'm actually... I will still love you. Trust me, I, I still will love you unconditionally. Nothing will change that. And I'm not saying, I'm, please, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying don't listen to secular music. I'm not saying don't dance. I'm not saying don't have fun. That's not what I'm saying. You okay? Okay. I'm just saying, man, put God first. If your worship is not trumping you listening to some whatever music you listen to, and, and be selective about the music you listen to as well. There's good music and there's bad music. Call bad music bad music. Call vulgar music. Well, okay, I, I go on. You know what I'm talking about. I don't know why. I'm, what are you watching? Ten, anger. Short temper. Moments of weakness. Moments of weakness. Sometimes I get really mad at Michaela and Carissa. In moments like that, she, they test my patience. In moments like that, you can ask them. I take a deep breath sometimes. I just stop and I'm like, <sighs> yeah, yeah. Because I know that I'm about to say something and I'm about to do something that's going to be very uncharacteristic of who I am as a believer. And who I am as a child of God. And that's going to open a door 
to some demons that are going to come and affect my life. Because it's short bursts of anger that can make me a very angry person, if not managed well. Can we worship for some time? And I, like I said, I didn't read a verse. And I was very honest about that. That was not the point. I could have. I could have gone on a deep Bible study and done that. I just wanted to encourage you. And for the next, you know, 20 to 30 minutes, I just want to spend some time in worship. I'm going to come back. We're going to pray for some stuff. But let us allow the Holy Spirit to do some healing in this place. Is that okay? I believe in healing. Here's what I also believe in. I, yes, I believe in the power of laying hands, but I also can believe that God can heal you when you have a contrite spirit, when you have a spirit of brokenness, when you can say, God, I, I am broken and I am confessing to you in the presence of God. When you can use this moment of healing, there is an atmosphere of healing. Like God gave me this message for a reason. Right? And you're probably sitting there and you're wondering, oh, I wish somebody else was here to listen to this. No. He wanted you to hear this. If he wanted someone else to hear, hear this, they would have been here. But somebody here needed to hear this. So I'm leaving this with you today. And I'm saying, how are you going to allow God to minister to you? It could be where you are. If you're physically able, go on your knees and say, God, that's a sign of surrender. If you're able, lift up your hands. Say, God, I surrender. I want to give it to you. And for the next few minutes, let's just, let's just be in, a, in the atmosphere of healing. Where there's an atmosphere of deliverance and breakthrough, use that moment. Use that moment to be healed. Use that moment to be set free. Use that moment to receive your healing and your breakthrough. For some of us, it's spiritual abuse you've been through. I don't know what it is. Like, whatever that is that the enemy has been holding over your head and has been camped inside of your territory, okay, he's gate crashed. For some of y'all, he's, he's put up camp. He is... He is, you know, just exploited you. He is living rent-free in some of your homes and lives. And you're allowing him to. You're giving him that room. You're giving him lodging. He's feeding on your soul. You're giving him free food. He's eating away piece by piece. You're giving away your heart piece by piece. And you've just domesticated it. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Repent. Come back into the presence of God.